Hello everyone, this is Reza Dorani. In today's video, I will show you how we can get the members from a SharePoint group using Power Automate flows. We will build the entire flow from scratch and I will also show you one neat technique in which you can share certain actions in your flows with users within your organization or outside of your organization. So let's get started with the video, but first, my introduction. So to begin with, in Power Automate, I have a flow here called Help Desk Summary. The flow reads all the items from a SharePoint list called Tickets. It's basically a Help Desk list where users create tickets in the system. Once the flow fetches all the data from that SharePoint list, I'm executing a select action to just fetch the columns that I would like to include as part of the email that goes out. Next step, I'm creating an HTML table based on the output of the select action, applying formatting for my email, and finally, I am sending out the email to a user called James. Now, if I was to manually run this flow, once the flow completes, the user James will receive an email, and the email will contain the information from my tickets list. Now let's say the requirement is such that I would like to send this notification email out to a specific SharePoint group. Now in SharePoint, when you create groups, you can add users to your groups. In my case here, I have a group called Help Center Members. And as part of this group, I have two users, James and Sarah. Now in order for me to send an email out to the SharePoint group members, if I head back to Flow, in order for me to read the details of the members of the SharePoint group, if I head over to add an action and go to the SharePoint connector, you will note that there is no action right here that gives you all the members of a SharePoint group. However, there is an action called send an HTTP request to SharePoint, wherein you can call SharePoint REST API calls. So in this case, I am going to execute a query to fetch the members of my SharePoint group. And the way I will do that is I will connect to my SharePoint site, which is my help center site. I will execute the get method. And then the next step is I need to define the API endpoint. And the API endpoint looks like this. It's going to be underscore API slash web slash site groups. And then I need to provide the group ID now, if I head back to my SharePoint group in this case, if you look at the URL on the top, each group has an associated membership group ID. And all you need is that group ID. In my case, the group ID is five. So I'm going to plug in the number five right here. And because I need the user information from the group, I am going to then add slash users to this endpoint. Now, once I do this, and if I was to go ahead and run this flow now, so once the flow runs, if we look at the send an HTTP request to SharePoint action right here, this is the output that it generates. Now, if I was to copy this and put this in Visual Studio Code so we can analyze the JSON output, the response comes in this format. There's a node called D and then there's a node called results. And within D results, we have an array. The square bracket indicates that we have an array of responses because we could have one or more users in our SharePoint group. And in this array, we have the different users available. And in that, we have a lot of properties of the users that we can leverage. For example, we have the email of the user, or we have the fact that whether or not the user is a site admin, what's the user principal name, what's the login name, and so and so forth. Now that we've seen the structure of the response, let's see how we can get the email addresses of the users from this response. So back to my flow, I'm going to rename this action to SharePoint group members, and then I'm going to add an action called select. And what select does, it's basically a data operation in which you can pass an array, and then you can select the data points in that array that you require. In my case, I require the email 
of the array response that is coming from SharePoint group members. So I'm calling this action select email from requires an array. Now, if I enter the body attribute, if we go back to the JSON, the body is the entire response right here. However, the array that I am interested in is in a node called D and within that there's another node called results and that's where the array is. And if I head back now to my flow for the select action, if I go to peak code, I can basically look at the code view of that action. Right here is that body attribute. So I'm going to go and copy this and exclude the at sign and I'm going to remove the from and this time go to expressions, paste what I just copied, which is nothing but the outputs of SharePoint group members, which is this action question mark body, which is the response that it gives. Now I need to traverse through and reach to the point of that results array. And the way I can do that is question mark D. So it basically goes into the next node question mark results. And this includes that array, which has the email address of the users that I'm looking out for. Once I plug this in, I'm going to click OK. And then for the map property, I am going to switch this to text mode and right here, once again, I'm going to go to expression and the expression is going to be item question mark email. I'm going to say, okay. And this now should return an array of just the email addresses of the users who are a part of that SharePoint group. Now, in order for me to send an email right here to the group members, I need the email addresses to be semicolon separated. Select is going to return an array. I will add another compose action. I have renamed it to SharePoint user emails. And right here in the input, once again, I'm going to head over to expressions. Now in expressions, there's an expression called join and join expects first an array. So I will head over to dynamic content and give it the array of the emails, which is the output that I'm getting from this compose action. And then I want to join this by semicolon. And this now will give me semicolon separated email addresses of all the users in my SharePoint group. And once I have that information, all I have to do is in the send an email action right here, I'm going to switch over to advanced mode because I want to add some content dynamically. And in the dynamic content here, where it says SharePoint user emails, I'm going to select the output of this action. I will click test and I will then save and run this. And once the flow run completes, let's look at the responses of these various actions. Select will just give me the email addresses of the users in the SharePoint group, and it will provide the response in the form of an array. That's why we have the square brackets right here. And the email IDs here are for James and Sarah. These are the two members in my SharePoint group. Next step, I'm joining the elements of this array by semicolon. And right here, you can see the output now is in string format, wherein it has the email addresses of the users in my SharePoint group, semicolon separated. And then finally, I'm sending out the email. And this email now will go out to both James and Sarah, who are my SharePoint group members. If I log in as James, here is the email that James has received. And if I log in as Sarah, here is the email that Sarah has received. So that's how easily you can read your SharePoint group members by just plugging in this REST API endpoint. Now there is also an endpoint available where you can search for groups using the display name. I prefer not to use the display name purely because group names in SharePoint can potentially change. However, one thing that will never change is the group ID. So let's take a scenario here wherein I would like to share part of my flow to a different user in my organization or in a completely different tenant. So how would I go about doing that? Now, what are the standard options for sharing flows? One is I can add another user as an owner, but if I do that, I'm granting that user full access to my flow and the connections within my flow. Next step is I can go ahead and export this flow. So package it and share it with another user within my organization or beyond. And they can basically import that flow 
and set up their own connections and use it. Third option is I can send a copy of this flow to any user within my organization right here and just plug in their email addresses. They will get a notification. They will click on that notification. It will create the flow for them based on your flow template and they will have to plug in their own connections there and use the flow. However, in my case, I would like to just share a part of the flow. That is, I would like to share these three actions. Maybe I have another user who just wants to go ahead and grab the SharePoint group members. Now, one option is I can go to copy to my clipboard, right? I can copy actions and then I can paste the actions, right? I can go right here. I can say add an action, go back to clipboard and paste it. However, whatever I am copy and pasting is only available for me for my current user session. So if I was to clear my browser cache or just sign out and sign back in, I will lose the actions that I have copied to my clipboard. So this is only specific to a single user, but how do I share it beyond a single user? So the trick here that one of my coworkers actually showed me is if I go and say copy to my clipboard, just open notepad and just do control V, which is basically pasting what has been copied to my clipboard. What it does is it basically adds the entire code associated with that action that I just copied. Now that I have this in my notepad, if I share this with another user, so let's say I share this with another user, when that user logs in and copies this from the notepad or any editor of your choice. So let's say that user is me right now and I was to go ahead and create a very simple flow. If I head over to my clipboard, notice I won't see that right here. This is pertaining to only things that I copy paste. This is per user account. However, if I have that information, which I had copied in the notepad, if I have that, if I come right here, if I just select this and do control V, it will paste that action right here in my clipboard. And guess what I can do right now? I can just select this and it will add that action directly in my flow. Of course, I will have to add my own connection to it. So I'm going to add my connection, but everything else will stay intact. I can easily go ahead and change my SharePoint site address, just plug in my group ID and I am good to go. Now, as part of the actions that I want to share, I don't want to just share one action here. I want to even share the select email action and the SharePoint user email action because the output of this action is what gives me the email addresses of my SharePoint group members semicolon separated. So how do I share that? Well, one option is I can of course copy to clipboard, copy to clipboard. You know, I can just keep doing that and keep creating those small files and keep pasting them to notepad or any editor of my choice and keep sharing it with the other user. But imagine a case wherein I have 10 different actions that I would like to share. So how do I go about grouping the actions together? Well, in flow, there's an action called scope and in scope, you can basically group actions together. So right here, I can just drag this and start placing these actions within my scope right here. Now that I'm done with this, I can go ahead and copy this to my clipboard, paste it in notepad. Here's my snippet that I plan to share with the other user. And once I share it with the other user and the other user logs in, once again, if that user goes to add an action, goes to clipboard and right here, if he pastes the code that I shared with him, notice that scope is available right here. And if I select this, it's going to plug in that scope and all the actions within the scope. If I just go ahead and test this flow and right here, as you can see, the final output is the same, which is semicolon email addresses of my SharePoint group members. Now this sharing feature is extremely powerful because I can share snippets of my flow to other users and more or less when you build complicated stuff in your flow and you would like to reuse that, this is how you can share your snippets. Now, as part of today's video, I actually plan to share three snippets to start with. One is SharePoint group members. The other one is Office 365 group members. So how do you get their mail addresses? And another one is Azure AD group members. So you have 
three different options here that allows you to fetch email addresses of users who are a part of these different groups. And once I share these snippets, the link to which will be in the description of this video, all you would have to do is just go ahead and copy the snippet, head over to any of your flows where you would like to leverage that feature. In my case right here, I have a very simple travel request approval flow wherein an item is created in a SharePoint list, it goes through manager approval, and then finally it heads over for HR approval. And right here, I am hard coding the email address of the HR user. But what I would like to do here is instead of hard coding the HR user email, what if I would like to read the data from a SharePoint group? In that case, if I head over to my SharePoint site and go to view all site settings, head over to site permissions. I have a group here called HR admins. What's the group ID? It's 13. Okay, I'm gonna head back to my flow. Right here, I'm gonna add an action. I'm gonna head over to my clipboard, copying that code snippet, control V. Here's my code snippet. I'm gonna click this. It's gonna add that entire snippet in there. Of course, I have to change things. In my case, it's a different site. So I'm gonna to point to my site and my group ID is all I have to change. I'm gonna change this to 13. Everything else is already in place. And right here now in the HR admin action where I'm sending the approval task, I'm gonna remove the assigned to and right here head over to dynamic content and fetch the output of the SharePoint group member emails action. And just like that, I have changed my flow from a hard coded email to email addresses of users from a SharePoint group. If you like this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so that whenever I post my latest video, you get notified about it. Thank you so much for watching.